Welcome to a full review of the Passat GTE. At this moment, maybe the most interesting Passat version. We'll find out, of course, with a recent facelift iteration, exterior, interior, and the driving experience. Here for you with Thomas in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go. Here the Passat GTE in the front. Since the facelift, there's a more horizontal stress that leads over directly to the new headlamps. LED standard, optional, the matrix LED. And the GTE, of course, special, has this C-SPAN data running light here in the lower part. That's really impressive. And the charging port is right here at the front. The length is at 4 meters 77, 15 foot 6 or 188 inches. Wheels are available from 17 to 19 inch. These here are the 18 inch wheels, so somewhat a nice compromise. And the normal suspension which start just at that, even for the GTE. And optionally, you can get the DCC, dynamic chassis control, that the adaptive suspension where you have more variety between stiffness, you know, a little bit stiffer or softer. You can pick it yourself in the driving modes and also recommended to have more comfort with this vehicle. The interesting color here for today is aquamarine blue, a very, very nice one, has, you know, some green nuances, but so interesting. I think also very well fits to the GTE. It has these, you know, these blue accentuations. But of course, a white GTE, for example, there you would see more of these blue accentuations as a contrast. We also have a white GTE review, by the way. You can check it out there. The Passat in general, available as sedan and as estate. B8 generation in the US, the version is a little bit different. We also have an overview review of that. You can check that out as well. Here, the estate, typical estate sh sh um, shape here, contrasting chrome elements. So overall, a classic but timeless design. And in the rear, since the face if you have a new tail lamp design which looks more modern also when you use the braking light for example and if you have the matrix LED option you also get cascading turning indicators both in the front and in the rear and in the lower part <whistles> clear case for the auto fuel fake exhaust police hmm So the Passat GTE features a 1.4 TSI turbo petrol engine, 218 horsepower system output, maximum only electric drive, up to 140 kilometers an hour or 90 miles an hour. And now with a 13 kilowatt hour battery for more electric range. So about 50 kilometers or 30 miles pure electric range. And you know, you can use it already very well. 7.6 seconds is the acceleration figure when you combine both powertrains for the maximum output. This is the car key, simple, clean, and I prefer this one over the one of the new Golf. And the door closing sound, very solid. Instead of the doors, soft touch here on the top part, then a nice integration of the ambient lighting right here. You can pick different colors, substantial door pockets. Then since the facelift, you have a new steering wheel with a new, more modern design, left side cruise control commands, right side for the virtual instruments, GTE steering badge right there. This is also, you can really feel that flat bottom of that. Here are the optional digital instruments, zoom more about the screens and the seats for the GTE. In general for the Passat you can get a nice fabric seats and here with the GTE they have a blue scheme in the inside fabric and also here with some contrast stitching in blue. I would definitely stick with these. These are also the Ergo Comfort seats so they're really good. 
option you can also get Alcantara on the inside with the design package, but then also the outside parts here would do with animal skin. So rather stick with these and save the money and also have the best climate comfort. Getting inside is fairly easy. And the cool thing about the Passat is always, it is very suitable for tall adults. So the seats here really welcome also tall legs and long legs and so on. And a good seating comfort here in these seats. The front area you can make a little bit longer or shorter, nice integration two memory seatings here also, and headroom plenty. No problem with one with A6 or six foot one. Option, you can also get a panoramic roof, then you would have a little bit less headroom, but still it would be just fine. Steering wheel here with a manual command, but really goes far out, so you can really find a very suitable driving position, no matter which body size. So the Passat would normally start with analog instruments still, optional 11.7 digital instruments here, updated since the facelift. On the right side, a normal Passat would start 6.5 inch, but that's already not standard for the Passat GTE. The Passat GTE already started with an eight inch screen and then optional this one here, 9.2 inch, the biggest one available, then with no knobs anymore. The eight inch one, I would rather recommend that one, the standard one, because it still has a manual volume knob and also this zoom in and out knob for the GPS map, so needles to the screens. Since the facelift, the analog clock is also gone, then here replaced with this Passat badge. It doesn't look bad at all. The integration here with the horizontal um, variance is also actually quite nice. Yeah, but the clock also had something definitely. Then again, the ambient lighting has a very nice touch to it. And also here, the decor element here, soft touch, top part soft touch. So the build quality is really good. And here it's not an all new vehicle. Therefore, we also have still manual controls here for the AC. And I really like it so easy and straightforward. Why can't newer cars only just, you know, keep that? USB-C charger here in the front. Then you also have the GTE mode, talking about that one while driving, and the E mode, also talking about that one while driving. Inductive charging pad here in the front. Apple CarPlay also works wirelessly, and with auto via cable. Here, once again, look at the steering wheel. Perforation at the side. This heated steering wheel is also an option, and it goes in three different strength or levels. Then adaptive cup holders right here. And you have this solid armrest. You can put it up in a you know, nice position for your elbow and underneath so much space and also another USB-C charger. The digital instruments here, you can switch the view, how you want to have it, classic style or just the middle part, whatever you want to have displayed here. They're a little bit brighter than it appears on camera. I just need to find, you know, should I speed the right one and, um, and so on that it doesn't flicker. It does not no, or never flicker on, you know, human eye, but sometimes it does on the camera. So you're really flexible with adjusting these digital instruments. That's the cool thing. Head-up display is, yeah, somewhat nice to have, but you see it's not directly projected into the windscreen, but rather on this separate small plexiglass layer. Yeah, I mean, it's better than nothing, but a Passat should have a real one, I think. And here the infotainment system, up close, you can see here when you mix it with the fuel and the electric, for example, here 12 kilowatt hours per kilometers electric consumption <laughs> and 2.5 liters per mile kilometers. So that's a mix, but it really always depends on how you use that recharging. There are special e displays that also shows you which range is left. Again, 40 to 50 kilometers would be a realistic range in not winter times. You can let the energy flow be shown to you here where the battery is placed. Also here in front wheel drive only, just remember there is a main menu like this and it's actually quite clear and easy to read, but you can also individualize yourself a whole menu like this. The GPS actually looks quite good and it's also responsive enough. It again, the eight inch screen would also do fine. Sometimes here it could even be a little bit faster, definitely. Then you have the Apple CarPlay integration. It looks like this, also nice at the moment, wireless. But yeah, sometimes I prefer the cable connection. On the other hand, with the inductive charging pad, it's also, of course, a nice and clean solution. And we have the 700 watt DIN audio system right here. This is an option. And um, I can just say that it's actually, yeah, definitely worth it because it gives so much more like in-depth sound to that, really cool. This top light is very interesting. It also belongs to the ambient lighting and it looks very fancy. Some say it's distracting while driving. Hmm, I haven't made up my mind about that yet. What's also nice is this frameless back mirror and here the combination of that looks really fancy, right? And in the rear, this is clearly a family vehicle. You have enough space also here with a manual shade then for the sun. 
also soft touch materials at the inside very good build quality and you have a lot of leg room here left no problem at all also the nice blue con stitching here at the back part and everything is softened up also the same you know scheme here in the rear, rear for the rear compartment headroom also no problem especially with the estate there's a lot of headroom and so comfortable these rear seats um really feeling at home here the middle console does offer also this climate control and even rear seat heating if you pick that out as an option and a real power socket here as well next to a new usb-c charger isofix at the outside you can also flip the seats from here fold the seats from here other than that here you fold these down and these are non-adaptive cup holders and you can also only fold the middle part down here as a ski hatch well, you do buy a Passat for this to load things in and out very easily. Really cool with this estate. This one actually goes forward when you open the trunk, but you have to put it back manual then later on and here in two steps, but it has nice rails at the side. The width here is about a meter and the normal length is already one meters and 15. And you can also fold the seats from here and you see they fold very very well and then you have a maximum length of yeah almost two meters right here so that's very very well usable so cool and also easy to put like mountain bikes in there when you demount the front tire and so on and here below that you can put it like this and then have for example like a storage for your charging cables hey what's up great you're here in our driving part Thomas's driving lounge with the Passat GTE and of course the most recent facelift iteration of the Passat right here and indeed this has some effects on the vehicle definitely the new steering wheel told you earlier is really cool as for the new form and for the modern design this also brings a um, you know, more premium touch to the vehicle so really like that and we're starting here in the city um, all electric of course is when the battery is charged somewhat then you always start in the E mode and it's just so relaxing to start all silent the good noise insulation plays along with that in the D mode when you lift the throttle the car is rather rolling usually you might also want to go to the B mode so that comes closer than to electric vehicle driving because then there's more recuperation so when you go off the throttle then then there's immediate recuperation and quite substantial so we have some plug-in hybrids even some evs which are not that strong others especially teslas for example have very very strong recuperation it's always a matter of philosophy if you rather go for like this one pedal driving feeling or more normal combustion engine car like and here when you are in the b mode there's indeed substantial recuperation and i like that i think it's always a safety thing in the moment when you lift the throttle you're already decelerating before you go to the brakes and sometimes you can even leave it then with the recuperation just with lifting the throttle and that's fine then of course the car does also re do the regenerative braking when you hit the normal brakes and then when even more braking powers need the normal brakes are being applied but here in the b mode i think it's um you know when you're getting used to it maybe even more comfortable and suitable for that kind of vehicle here and if that here would be all electric i wouldn't mind either but of course it can be a good combination when you for example commute to work all electric short ways during the week and maybe take a longer holiday trip on the weekend then for example you know a plug-in hybrid might be the ideal solution when your charging charging infrastructure is not perfect yet or you can like sometimes recharge or not that long or so you know it really depends on the use case if the pf makes sense or not and i can just stress again that driving it all electric is yeah the most fun you can drive with the passat right here really very very cool and gives you such you know, even a more sovereign feeling the passat itself is one of the best mid-size vehicles because you know it gives you a premium touch it gives you a premium driving feeling here with the optional dcc dynamic chassis control that's the adaptive suspension you should definitely go for that it adds so much more comfort and you're also flexible between like sporty and normal comfort driving modes 18 inch wheels we have mounted here you remember 17 to 19 available i would not necessarily go for the 19 inch they look cool yes but some somewhat also reduce the comfort so stick with the base 17 inch if you're okay with that visually 
for the best comfort then or 18 inch I think is a very good compromise between comfort and sportiness and we can of course also use all of the Excel, um, you know, adaptive cruise control systems and so on blind spot monitor we show you more of that when we hit the motorway very soon we go on the motorway test some adaptive um, you know all the assistance systems and then also do a high speed test see what about the all electric driving 140 kilometers or 90 miles maximum then just the combustion engine in a combination with combustion engine so the electric motor itself cannot run any faster it's also predominantly thought for the low speed driving then here i have the head-up display which is not projected into the windscreen not updated with the facelift here in the separate layer I mean, it's somewhat helping, definitely better than looking down to the virtual instruments. But I've got, of course, not such a sophisticated feature in this case. Even if we're here in the all electric mode, by the way, I have some substantial acceleration only if I really flow it out. So there's this threshold, I can see it in the instruments and also feel it a little bit in the pedal. Then the combustion engine would hop on. Most of the time, you're fine and with driving all electric here. And then it's also about the consumption of course hmm, yeah always hard to tell with the plug-in hybrids always telling that pure electric range 40 to 50 kilometers so around 30 miles will be less in winter times when it's really really cold and when the battery is completely depleted you score normal combustion engine consumption here because you have more weight on the other hand on the other hand you can still use recuperation even if the battery is not recharged from the outside so seven, so like six to seven liters on one kilometers with empty battery. And that's like about like 40 MPG, 48 MPG UK or something. Yeah, so that still works. But of course the car just really makes sense when you recharge then frequently. And then you can also combine these power, con you know, the, like these consumption figures and maybe have like a very low liter consumption figure and some electric um, consumption as well. And this, you know, mix does really make sense. So far, here at the lower speeds, it also makes sense then to drive all electric. When we later hit the motorway, then for example, normal hybrid mode would make sense. But we have different driving modes here. Um, normal driving mode, for example, sport driving mode will be in, you know, also have an effect on DCC. But we also have the GTE mode. And when I put in the GTE mode, then I have, you know, the, the best boost. So I have maximum performance then, both from combustion engine and electric drive. And in the instruments, I also see that the RPM goes up now, 2000 RPM at the moment here. But yeah, at the moment that doesn't make any sense. So I turn off the GTE mode again. And so when I leave the throttle here now, I even have to push the throttle now a little bit again, that I don't decelerate too much from this recuperation. And when I hit the E mode button, I can switch then between the E mode solely and the normal hybrid mode. And at the moment, for example, I say, oh, I want to drive all silent again, and then I go to the E mode again. If the combustion engine was on before, it can happen that it stays on for a little while, you know, so um, that's nothing special. And the car is always checking some parameters right now, how to control that and so on. The steering feeling, by the way, is very good, really precise. It doesn't have a real dead zone area. It is progressive, so you don't have to steer that much. So you have the dual clutch transmission here, which is an ideal solution, of course, when you combine a combustion engine with an electric drivetrain. And it's really fun to drive this vehicle. It looks from the outside as like the typical family estate, mid-size, but it's really fun to drive. You know, and that's, I think, really cool. Of course, GTE is not cheap, but depending on the country then, when you get some subsidiaries or tax benefits and so on, this can even out this extra price, for example, or later also when, when it's cheaper, cheaper in taxation. In Germany, for example, then a GTE will, at the end of the day, be cheaper than some of the other versions, which are cheaper in the entry price because of all the benefits then for the plug-in hybrid vehicles and, of course, also for the all-electric vehicles. Here, once again, leaving the foot off the throttle and see here will it be enough now I have to apply some brake then more recuperation but still I was remaining in the area of recuperation now the RPM dropped to zero and when I accelerate now again we stay in the zero Whoa. there's a lot of smoke coming from I guess the inside of the vehicle from inside 
something was like rather smoking from the inside. Who knows? <laughs> so we're getting on the motorway now. And what I do now is I once more again want to show you a pure electric acceleration. And then when we get to the unlimited speed part, showing you a GTE combined acceleration. Here, for example, acceleration from 40. Let's see. I have to really have to like hit it perfectly. Let's see. Uh, I can't get uh, 80. No. So it, it could have been a little bit more ideal. I really had to watch out that I don't exceed this, um, you know, this threshold where then the combustion engine hops on. Um, but you see, you have some nice acceleration also when you're all electric. You just don't really realize it sound-wise, and you can definitely enjoy that. Well, and what about when I activate the travel assist here? on this steering wheel. Travis is now more sophisticated and that means like not only distance but also the side, you know, how the car is held in the lane. That is then done with the travel assist and also up to, you know, quite substantial high speeds. And here you can see the car is being actively kept in the lane right here and also, you know, pretty much centralized. Theoretically, it would work up to a speed of 210 kilometers an hour, but not sure if you want to do that with the travel assist activator or rather want to drive yourself or so. There's the blind spot monitor as well. And someone's overtaking me, so I'm not flooring it out right here at this moment. Um, and so far, you know, travel assist is doing a good job keeping the car in the lane and it's not too, you know, not too annoying also. You do feel some movement in the steering wheel, yes. It's also capacitive that you can keep your hands on the steering wheel and that's it. You don't need to act, you don't need to move the steering wheel that it still knows, hello, I'm here. Just by touching it, it still knows. And this car here also has traffic sign recognition. So here in the moment, showed me that also traffic signs were realized. And then I can also, you know, just speed accordingly. So, yeah, so far the, the update travel assist definitely brings or brings more, at the, uh, you know, assistance systems sophistication to the car as well. 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, really good as for noise insulation, such as silent vehicle. And this is really one of the best mid-size vehicles here for motorway driving, so relaxing and you can drive it all the way and even for tall people on longer journeys it has good seating comfort and so on that's what I really love about this vehicle here now well charging the car just again and that's a cool thing a lot of the energy is never lost you can always gain something back and that's the thing then with the with the PF thing and of course also with the pure EVs. What I also appreciate is that especially while driving you can just change in the temperature here in these normal knobs so you know that the Passat B8 is not the newest vehicle but the thing is that's also the reason why we still have some old school commands and yeah I really like that. So GTE mode now electric boost and then we'll combine both or everything um, by the way, if you put it first in sports mode, you know, you can always still pick the GTE mode that's possible. And there is no like S shifting mode now because the GTE has the B mode then for that. But the GTE mode will give us some nice performance. 7.6 seconds is the acceleration figure, zero to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And we'll not start from zero for safety reasons. We'll just roll a little bit and now I'll just combine the acceleration, 40 kilometers an hour, and let's go. That's 180, 180 kilometers an hour, and I think, yeah, a really decent acceleration, definitely, and I mean, it's a, uh, small displacement figure as for this engine but still some nice sound and even at 160 kilometers an hour still decent as for the noise insulation as for the wind noise and so on and gives me such a stable feeling here on the road as well let me do a lane change here at higher speeds no problem of course this car is not set out to be a sports vehicle but it really is fun to drive and 
I mean, you can set this DCC either here in the sport mode, that is a little bit stiffer then, like this, or if you go for the comfort mode, um, do a lane change, you feel the car is shaking a little bit more, but then again, it's evening out the bumps a little bit better, and thus you can just adjust your driving mode, the preferred ones, and with the face lift here also, when you go to the individual settings, um, yeah, probably shouldn't do that while driving, so um, don't repeat that. Here again, the DCC with this span between comfort and sport, and you can individualize which your preferred setting really is. So, yeah, it's been just an interesting drive here once again, and here, for example, combining a little bit of combustion engine and electric drive, 2.6 liters in one kilometers with this strong acceleration, but then I also depleted some kilometers of the electric range from the battery, um, and so you can also mix your consumption depending on what you refill first, basically. Here, uh, now once again, looking at the tunnel side, nice ambient lighting over here. I put it to blue and all the way to the max. There's also this you know, top light available, but that could be distracting from time to time. But overall, I think, still a very solid car and still one of the very, very nice choices here in the mid-size segment. The driving part only, once again, confirms that. And now to our conclusion for the day with the VW Passat GTE. Yeah, I think it's the most interesting version because it gives you the electric driving feeling and driving it all electric is the most fun, definitely. Of course, it makes sense when you can recharge frequently and then drive as often electric as possible. And also substantial all electric range with about 40 to 50 kilometers or around 30 miles, that's totally okay. Or you use it in the hybrid mode and then have a low fuel consumption or use then the combustion engine on the motorway, whereas you use the electric drive in a city, then it really makes sense. Also the styling, I mean, it's rather a conservative car in general, but I think the styling is rather timeless. The facelift changes were also quite nice. More infotainment also on the interior. And of course here for the GTE, a bigger battery for the higher range we mentioned earlier. Definitely still among, you know, one of the best mid-size vehicles. When we recently compared the BMW 3 Series, by the way, yeah, that one does have a better ride. It's sportier, it's more fun. The suspension, even the base suspension is better than the DCC suspension right here. And of course, the BMW 3 Series is also even more, you know, coast intensive than this one even here as the GT. But just, you know, a small hint because we recently had also the 3 Series for a longer period of time. Then we also like to draw some comparisons. You also have substantial space here on the, uh, on the interior. Very nice fabric seats here with the blue accentuations also alongside this blue GTE scheme. And of course, even more practical in the trunk here, especially when you have the estate version of the Passat. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Leave us your comments about this vehicle. Also tune in to other Passat reviews. We have a lot of these. You can check them all out on our channel. See you next time.